In these three critical days of Easter, Good Friday, that Saturday and Sunday, these three days, there were three hundred prophecies were fulfilled. In the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, three hundred Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled. Now the subject this evening is the one that got away. You see, I'm an angler, catch fish. And the greatest thrill is in telling people, say, well, I brought these few fishes, you know, for the wife to fry, we enjoy it. But you say, you know, the one that got away, you know, the one that I didn't catch, you know, it was such a big <laughs> blob, you know. That, 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 the thrill, you know, the one that got away. So I said, here is the fish that got away. And that fish happens to be a whale, a whale of a fish. You have heard about Jonah and the whale. Who doesn't know? Jonah and the whale. Everybody knows, There's even little children. You know, you know Jonah and the whale. So, but the whale that got away, Jonah's whale got away. You see, the only prophecy made directly by Jesus Christ about what was going to happen. And in that, he gave the example of Jonah. You see, it's a funny nature of man, that when a man of God comes along, to save mankind from, from perdition, mankind has a tendency to put obstacles in their way. They want that man of God to show them a sign, some miracle, some circus tricks. Do something, man, that which I can't do, then I think I'll give you credit that maybe you are a man of God. That is the sickness of man. Instead of listening to the man, what the man is telling you, whether it's good or bad, no, 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 no. I want you to perform some tricks. Can you stand on your head? Hmm? Can you stand on your head? Can you put your legs in the air? What? Can you stand on one hand? No, no, this is what mankind is looking from this man of God. So we find this sickness, it's common in the Holy Bible, in the, in the New Testament, in the Gospel of St. Matthews, we read that when Jesus Christ claimed that he was the Messiah, the anointed one, translated Christ, the Jews were not satisfied with his bona fide. So they came to him. Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, 39, 40. They come to him and they say, Master, to me it's sarcastic. They were sarcastic. They didn't mean it. Master, in the Hebrew language, Rabbi, Molana, Sheikh. This is what they said. We would have a sign of thee. We want you to show us a miracle to convince us that you are the genuine man of God. This was uncalled for. So Jesus reacts very strongly, very strongly. He said, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it. An evil and adulterous generation. In modern language, I don't use modern terminology for that. You can think as you like. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man, meaning himself, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. The only sign, the only miracle I'm giving you about my bona fide is the sign of Jonah. The miracle of Jonah is my miracle. And I'm asking again, what was that sign? Please, it's enough. What was that sign? I said, you see, very easy. Very easy. You have to go to the book of Jonah. The sign of Jonah, you have to go to the book of Jonah. But it's a bit difficult. You see, the book of Jonah in the Bible is only one page. In a thousand pages, to find that one page is difficult. You know, to look for that one page in a thousand pages, it is difficult. But you don't have to go there. If you went to Sunday school, little children, they know the story of Jonah. Jonah and the whale. Everybody knows. 
the Jewish child knows, the Christian child knows, the Muslim child knows, everybody knows Jonah in the way. In the book of Jonah, we read that God Almighty sends Jonah to the Ninevites, a city called Nineveh, a city of a hundred thousand people in those days, like a great metropolis, like New York or London in those days. So God Almighty commands Jonah, I said, you go to Nineveh and warn the people there to repent in sackcloth and in ashes, humble themselves before the Lord, or I will destroy them. Jonah, instead of going to Nineveh, he's despondent that these materialistic people, the evil and adulterous generation of his, of his time, same like in the time of Jesus is talking to his evil and adulterous generation, Jesus, the evil and adulterous generation of the time of Jonah. He said, that, that evil people, they will not listen to me. They'll make a mockery of me. So instead of going to Nineveh, he goes to Joppa. Is modern Jaffa in Israel. Jaffa. Modern Jaffa. And he takes a boat and is running away. At sea there's a storm. And the storm is not subsiding. And according to the superstition of the mariners, that anybody runs away from his master's command, he creates such a turmoil at sea. So they began to question, who can be responsible? For this, Jonah realizes that he is the guilty man because God Almighty told him to go to Nineveh and as a prophet of God, he is a soldier of God. He must listen to whatever God tells him. He has no right to be presumptuous. So he's running away. He's running away from his master's job. So he volunteers. He says, look, I am the guilty man. I am running away from master's command and God wants to kill me. And in the process, he's going to sink the boat to kill me. But you innocent people will die. It is better for you that you take me and you throw me overboard. God is after my blood and he'll be satisfied. You people will be safe. These mariners also a fantastic group of people. They say, no, 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 no. Since you entered the boat, we have seen you ever prayerful. Maybe he had that rosary, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, He's ever devoted to God while he was in the boat. He said, no, no, no. You are a good man. You are a godly person. We can't imagine you being guilty of such a crime. We have our own system of discovering right or wrong. And that is called a system of casting lots. It's like tossing the coin. Head or tail. Head or tail. So according to that system, they discovered that Jonah was the guilty man. So they, so they took him and they threw him overboard. The book of Jonah. Take two minutes to read, but you don't have... This is everybody, every child knows this. Every Christian knows this. So they threw him overboard and the storm subsided. Perhaps it was a coincidence, but the storm subsided. I'm asking the question, when they threw Jonah into the sea, was he dead or was he alive? Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, I know sometimes when if you said he was not alive and make you to change, it would have been difficult. So I would have said, look, if you, before you answered it, I, I would say, look, I want to make things easy for you to get the right answer. Because once you get the wrong answer, I have to move heaven and earth to make you to change the position. You know, to convince you that you were wrong. So I would have made things easy for you to get the right answer by telling you that, look, Jonah volunteered. He volunteered. He says, throw me. And a man who volunteers, you don't have to strangle him before throwing. You don't have to break his arm or limb before throwing. No, no, no. The man volunteers, he says, throw me. Why you want to kill him? Why you want to break his jaw? Nothing. So then I would have asked you, was he dead or was he alive? And unanimous, 100% you would have shouted, alive. Because I said, look, the man volunteered. One who volunteers, you don't, you don't have to maltreat him. Do you? He says, no. So he was alive. Right answer. Right answer. Any child would have answered that. The fish comes and gobbles him. Dead or alive? Alive! Let me hear again from you all. Alive! Yes, yes. From the fish's belly, he prays to God for help. 
Do dead people pray? Do dead people plead with God? Do they? No. So what was he? Dead or alive? Alive. He's alive. He's alive. alive. On the third day, the fish vomits him on the seashore. Dead or alive? Alive. And it is the, the mightiest miracle in the whole Bible. This is the mightiest miracle of all in the Bible. This is a miracle three times over. You see, when you throw a man into a raging sea, he ought to drown. He ought to die. If he died, it's not a miracle. A fish comes and gobbles the man. A fish is not a respecter of person. He says, you know, you are Jonah. You are a prophet of God. <laughs> gently, gently, gently. <laughs> not fish. No fish will ever do that. <laughs> you know, a fish gets a bait. You know, a big bait. Big. It's going to have a big bite. <laughs> You'll kill the man. If he died by the fish, it's not a miracle. It's not a miracle. If he didn't die, it's a miracle. Heat and suffocation in the whale's belly. Three days and three nights, he ought to die. He ought to die. If he died, it's not a miracle. But he's alive. Third day vomitors, he goes into the sea alive, he comes out alive. Nowhere does he say he died in between and he was resurrected. Nowhere, nowhere. That he died and was resurrected. He's alive, 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 alive. And what did Jesus say? He said, for as Jonah was, so shall the Son of Man be. The miracle of Jonah is that he is alive three times over. When we expect him to be dead. When we expect the man to be dead, he is alive, he is alive, he is alive. Jesus, he said, my miracle is the miracle of Jonah. Now, I am asking the Christians. That Jonah was alive for three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Everybody's agreed. And I'm asking the Christian that Jesus, for the same period of time, was he dead or was he alive? According to your church. According to your church, according to the one, one billion and five hundred million Christians, according to you and me, Jonah was alive for three days and three nights and Jesus for three days and three nights was he dead or was he alive? Dead! He was dead for three days and three nights. I'm asking the Englishman please sir tell me in your language Jonah is alive Jesus is dead is that like Jonah or unlike Jonah in your language? No, 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 this is your language. Look, you people taught me English. The Britisher, the Britisher. He conquered my country, India. He ruled my country, India, for 150 years. And I was born a British subject. And I carry a British passport, 69 year old. A passport which is 69 year old. I'm 78 now. 69 year old passport I got. And I was telling people in London, in the Royal Albert Hall, that I'm more British than most of you. Because, which guy is at that time about 65? I'm a, I got a British passport of 65 years old. How many of you are 65 years old? So I have been a Britisher for 65 years then. I'm a Britisher, got a British passport. And you people taught me English. You people taught me English. So I'm asking the Englishman, in your language, is this like Jonah or unlike Jonah? Thank you. Thank you, my brother. No, thank you. No, thank you, my brother. It's unlike Jonah. So, if he's unlike Jonah, then either he was bluffing the people. No, no, it's Jesus. He is telling he will be like Jonah, and you are telling that he was unlike Jonah. So, either he was lying, bluffing, deceiving the people, or you have misunderstood. One of the two. Either he was lying, he was bluffing his way through or you have misunderstood tell me which is it either he was lying or you have misunderstood i would say he was not lying i can't believe that this mighty messenger of god jesus christ who occupies such a high position in the house of islam that he is one of the mightiest messengers of god we believe jesus 
We believe in his miraculous birth. 